Hello, my raw beauties. We have another incredible guest joining us today. Shanna Spence is a registered dietitian and nutritionist mm -hmm. based out of New York. She has labeled herself as an eat anything dietitian, which I <laughs> love. And I am so excited to dig into today. I found your Instagram page. I'm not exactly sure how I came across your page, but I was uh -huh. like, I am picking up what this <laughs> woman putting down and the raw community <laughs> needs to meet with her. You have such a gift of being oh, thank you. To like complicated ideas and just distill it down into something bite-sized no mm -hmm. pun intended, that people can, <laughs> that people can really understand. So you started your career though in fashion and fashion merchandising. Mm -hmm. How on earth did you transition from that space over to the world of um, dietetics? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I constantly think about it because I feel like the answer um, changes so much. Like it's pretty like still... My thoughts are the same, but I, I like to think back to that moment of when I actually decided. I'm just like, when was that spark, you know? Um, but I've always been really into the idea of nutrition, and I grew up, like, very athletic, lots of sports, things like that. Yeah. But I also started to notice, even when I was in fashion, you know, our society in general, and especially where I grew up, there are a lot of differences, right? So I grew up in like sort of a low income area and I noticed a lot of chronic diseases and things like that. So my thinking was how can I help people or how can I give back and also really get something out of it myself because I was very much intrigued by nutrition as well. So that's kind of where I started thinking. And I thought I was going to just stay in public health. And I, I do currently work in public health, but I also kind of took on this like anti-diet approach just because of also how I grew up and, you know, being a teenager in my early 20s. And I was just like, you know what? I can't count how many times I downloaded like those calorie counter yes. apps on the phone and like yes. did all those things. And I was just like, oh my God, why did I do that to myself? So, <laughs> so then I just, you know, I kind of dived into this world. So I'm doing both, but um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So I, I mean, I always appreciate and love a story where your background and history and the way that you grew up mm -hmm. was an influence on the work that you're currently doing. And I feel like yeah. that is so often such a key piece. Um, when you see somebody or when you see a woman who is really shining in her career, mm -hmm. it, there's usually something deep down <laughs> that was like, planted long ago that led her to being in that space. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about anti-diet, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you? I mean, obviously anti-diet, but I feel mm -hmm. like the diet culture is so deeply ingrained in our it society yeah. and in our story of health and wellness, especially as women, mm -hmm. that I think that there's probably a lot of people who are like, if you're not dieting, what are you doing? Or yeah. <laughs> You know? No, that's exactly what they're thinking. Like, I get that question all the time, and even from um, other dietitians, because, yeah. you know, when we, like the word diet, right, in school, and probably everyone, we associate diet as like our food intake, not actually restricting, yes. but I don't think we realize like through society and through culture, like now we call it a diet culture, because we associate diets with restricting food. Um, that's what most of us think of now. They don't think like your diet for the day. Um, so it kind of made it very interesting uh, transition there. But for me, just anti-diet means that you can be healthy. You can still have goals. Like I don't want to take away someone's goal of, you know, whatever, like toning their arms or whatever your goal is, that's fine. Yeah. But how you're going about it is what I want to look at, you know, how are you restricting your food? Are you taking out whole food groups? You know, the low carb thing, I think will always be, be out there, um, you know, and other food group restrictions and things like that. Um, so I think of like anti-diet as just, you can still have your goals, you can still be healthy. Um, even if you want to lose weight for yourself, that's fine. 
but how are you going about doing it? So that's, that's kind of what we're talking about me and like other anti-diet dietitians. That's kind of what we mean. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I yeah. love it. I love it. I, love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you go back to the root of diet, as you said, it really is that combination of foods that you're eating mm-hmm. day in and day out. And that's going to shift and change. But we have as women really started to identify with our diet, right? Like yeah. even if you think about it, and I talk about this in our group program, sometimes we'll be like, you know, what labels do we put on individuals who are vegan? What labels mm. do we put on individuals who are doing keto? What, what label do we put on people who are doing this with their diet? And as women so often as well, even just labeling foods as good or bad and associating ourselves with being good or bad mm. based on what it is that we're eating. So I love that you're shattering so many of these uh, norms mm-hmm. and cultural uh, conditionings that we have you know, come to by, by this concept of Mm anti-dieting. So then if we're thinking about dieting as restricting, then anti-dieting sounds like there's no restriction. Mm -hmm. And one of the most common questions I come up with, and that is like, won't I just lose control? Won't I then just eat everything? And this also, um, question of, but some foods are bad, aren't they? Like Mm. sugar Mm -hmm. is bad. So (laughs) can I not be putting that in my body? Can you Uh tell me a little bit about your thoughts on those comments? Cause I'm sure you're hearing them too. Oh yeah. I get those all the time. And I mean, those are totally valid. I mean, it just, I appreciate when people do ask those questions because it means they're thinking, you know, because one thing I don't want is people just to, you know, assume that everyone knows everything you know, all the time. So I appreciate when people like kind of want to dig deeper and those are very valid questions. So the whole thing about binging, right? I think that's what you're referring to, like, or most people when um, they feel like they're just going to eat everything in sight. And I think that you will feel that way just because when we're used to being restricted, right? We're told we're only allowed to eat like I don't know, 1600 calories, which I'm saying not to do by the way, but that's what (laughs) most of us would think. Exactly. I'm like, don't, don't do that. (laughs) Okay. Disclaimer. Um, but I was just trying to think of a number, but you know, so we're told to like follow this plan and that's pretty much restricting ourselves, right? Cause what if you're hungry? You know, what if you're exercising a lot and you're starving? Um, so it's really just that feeling of, being restricted, and then eventually, you know what, you're probably going to feel like eating everything in sight, the binge. Same thing with sugar. A lot of times there's this misconception of sugar being addicting. I've heard it being compared to like drugs, like cocaine. Cocaine, Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, and that's not true. Like I get why, I totally get why, but the thing is that we're constantly told not to have something. And then what happens when you're told not to do something, you want to do it. You know, like, you know how you were a teenager and your parents were like, you can't go somewhere. And you're just like, that made you want to go even more. Um, So that's kind of what it's like. It's like um, actually like a dopamine effect, like when we have sugar and other foods, um, but it's not addicting. Right. So I just kind of want to break that conception, but that's kind of where that binging mentality comes from. So if you're allowing your body to have those foods, you're not going to feel like having them all the time. And a lot of my clients when they realize that, you know, I say they, they want to keep the cookies and ice cream out the house. I'm like, actually, I want you to have those in the house Mm. because when you get a craving, they're going to be there. And they're like blown away because they're they're thinking, oh my God, I actually didn't want it as much because it was there. I'm like, I know (laughs) that's why I told you to do it. Do you find like sometimes when, so when they first start doing it, that Mm -hmm. they will eat all the cookies and like all the things. And then that they might have that moment where they quote unquote, like lose control lose a bit. Control. Mm-hmm. Do you find that really yeah. like, oh, I had two cookies and I'm done. Yeah, no, it's definitely a progress. Like we talk about um, this whole intuitive eating movement. Um, it's definitely a progress to learn just because as children, we were born with it or as babies, I should say, we we're born with it. And just, you know, growing up, we often lose that ability. So mm-hmm. it's hard to regain. It's hard to even trust your body. So that's one of the intuitive eating principles, like honoring your hunger, trusting your body, um, trusting yourself, your mind. So it takes a while, 
but eventually you do get there because you realize it's okay to have something. No one's telling you not to have something. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole new thought. Yes. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. would you say are some of the most like common disordered eating thought patterns? So not eating disorders, but mm -hmm. there are so many women <laughs> I think mm -hmm. who have a disordered relationship with food. Mm -hmm. And what are some of those common patterns or habits that you see as a registered dietitian? Um, I think the most common is often the like cutting back the calories. Um, it not it wouldn't necessarily qualify as an eating disorder, but so the number I just threw out there sixteen hundred. So we're all we are all adults, right? So <laughs> you really no one should be eating honestly less than like two thousand. Mm -hmm. um, just because that's what our body needs. You know, a lot of times we think of calories as really bad and evil, but we need food. We need to survive. We need to have energy to move around. And a lot of times, most people, they're not eating enough. Mm -hmm. um, so they're tired a lot and it's because your body needs fuel. So I noticed that seems to be most of the time the case with most women. Um, not to generalize, but that's what I notice the most. So a yeah. lot of women who are aware of calories, counting calories, tracking them on all the different apps, mm -hmm. but also just not eating enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which will seem like mind boggling to people. Mm -hmm. I work with totally. people as well on this. If I eat more, how am I going to lose weight or how mm -hmm. am I going to you know, whatever, as you said, whatever your goal is, if I'm eating more, can you talk to me a little bit about that process Definitely. of eating so, more but still working towards your goals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can still lose weight. It will happen. But the thing is that um, when we cut back a ton, our metabolism also slows. Yeah. So we definitely still need food to fuel that as well. Right. And a lot of times, um, most of us get that 4 p.m. or like 3 p.m. slump. And I mean, if you're just having like a salad, you know, all day, like that's your lunch and people are so proud because they ate healthy, but it's just like, okay, you just ate some lettuce. So yes, you're going to be hungry at 3 p.m. Yeah. So that's, you know, so we're losing energy. So people don't realize they actually need to eat more. Mm. Um, you know, and it's like, if, you are confused about that, I highly recommend working with a dietitian. You know, a lot of times misinformation does come from the internet. Yes. Um, so, you know, try to stay away from Dr. Google, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But a lot of times I think that people, the energy slump is just from not eating enough. Yeah. And I also find what I see so commonly is that uh, women who are restricting will restrict during the day and then it's like a pendulum swinging. It goes the opposite direction at night because you're so hungry and deprived. Exactly. <laughs> and so all of a sudden you're eating so much more. So when you start to balance out the, um, uh, what's the word, but like you, you, you're allowing yourself to eat more during the day to energize mm -hmm. you. Yeah. The pendulum's not having to swing so far back mm -hmm. and forth. Exactly. You mentioned intuitive eating. Mm-hmm. What is intuitive eating in your mind? <laughs> so to sum it up, um, I guess briefly, because it's like a lot of things, but to yeah. just sum it up, it's really just trusting your body. So a lot of times, again, with, I'm going to use the term diet culture, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're taught that we should only eat at certain times. You know, a lot of times um, we're not listening to our body, right? Before, even before this, when I was working in fashion, um, we'd all be sitting at our desks and it would be like 11 a.m. And I would be starving, but I'm like, wait a second, it's not lunchtime, so I can't eat. And I <laughs> felt like I just had breakfast, right? So I was just like, no, like this isn't right, but I was starving, you know, and I know I wasn't the only one. So a lot of people talk about that. So it's really about um, listening to your body. Are you hungry? And it can be the other way too. Are you full? like really being present when you're eating. So it's just thinking, it's more like mindful eating and thinking about your body. Mm, I love that. So when you're intuitive eating, mm -hmm. if you feel hungry at 11, even if you've eaten at nine, exactly. do you eat? 
or yeah. do you hint? No, yeah, you eat, right? <laughs> you eat something. Yes, I know. Well, it's it sounds so easy to say, like just eat. You know, like people say all the time, "Oh, I'm hungry." I'm like, "We'll eat something," <laughs> but but we're so like ingrained. But see, that's what we're taught. We're like, but it's not twelve yet, and yeah. I already eat two hours before but you're hungry. So you should eat, you know, <laughs> like it yeah. sounds so simple, but yeah. Or I'm intermittent fasting or this person's given me, I'm following this blogger's meal plan right. or <laughs> there's a million different reasons why we feel that our body is wrong mm -hmm. and that we need to outsource that information to somebody else. Exactly. Exactly. When really like we're born with this body that is meant to help us survive and thrive and mm -hmm. to give us those messages. So if we can just tune in and listen and trust, which trust, I mean, that's a whole nother. It's hard. It's hard, but yeah, 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 yeah. Piece. Exactly. So if somebody was interested in intuitive eating and they're like, okay, this sounds nice, mm -hmm. but I just don't think I could do it. Mm -hmm. It's like impossible. I've been doing diets for way too long. I, there's no way I could trust myself. If you told me that I could just eat when I was hungry, I would eat all the time. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Is intuitive eating just for like a specific group of people? It's not, but there are steps to it. So the first step is always being ready to kind of ditch that mentality. And mm -hmm. for some, they're not there yet. Um, and that's, and it's perfectly normal. Like there's nothing wrong with someone who is scared to do it. Because I've also had that happen where I explain the process when um, people ask me for um, like my services and I explain how it works and they're freaked out. They're just like, no, I don't think I can do it, which is normal. Like I'm not offended because yes. it's something new to think about. But the first step is really just to be ready to ditch that mentality and be ready to quote unquote mess up um, mm -hmm. because we're not used to that. We're not used to trusting our gut basically. Right. Um, we're just being told for a long time how much to eat, when to eat. So when someone tells you that you can actually listen to yourself, it's, it's scary. So, you know, so I, I always encourage people to do a little bit of research first. I always recommend podcasts or books to kind yes. of get people thinking. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Janine Roth's book is amazing. She's mm -hmm. one of the dietitians who... Um, created intuitive eating. Um, and I'll also link to some other books. Do you have any suggestions for resources or books that we could link to for the audience that would be Definitely. helpful? Um, so like the, one of the best ones, like the OG is um, Evelyn Triboli. Um, yes. Great uh, intuitive eating. They have so many books. Um, yeah. But I always give like, just because this was the book that started my I guess journey is like an anti-diet dietitian. Mm -hmm. um, Christy Harrison's, it's called anti-diet. <laughs> okay, amazing. <laughs> Simple. Okay. Um, and it's such a light read. I highly recommend anyone, even if you're already ready to go with the intuitive eating path, I highly recommend everyone to just read that book. It's, it's honestly, she goes through um, the history of diet culture and why we're all so wired that way. So mm -hmm. highly recommend anyone to really start there. Amazing. And I would also like to suggest that everyone goes over to follow the nutrition tea and uh, <laughs> Shanna, because you do such an amazing job of distilling again, some of these concepts and ideas. And so if, mm -hmm. even if you're at the point right now where you're like, I just can't break up with diet culture yeah. head over there and start to kind of note some of the ideas and immerse yourself in that and, um, and, and start to listen to some of the words that she's saying, because it's really powerful stuff. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So obviously working with a dietitian um, is so helpful in mm -hmm. regards to kind of having that system and structure to move mm -hmm. through this and to sort of leave behind old patterns and step into and embrace new ones. You mentioned one of the first steps is ditching diet culture. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you walk us through like a couple other key fundamental points in regards to transitioning into intuitive eating? Yeah, definitely. So we have um, uh, ditch the culture, the mentality, that's like the first step because that really, you know, that's what kind of um, gets people is just their thinking. So once you're ready, so once you've decided, you know what, I can give this a try, then we're going to do, and these are all out of order, but another really important principle is honor your hunger. 
yeah. or honor your fullness. So honor your hunger is kind of what I talked about before that mm-hmm. feeling of, okay, it's 11 AM. I did eat at nine, but I'm yeah. hungry. Yeah. So you know what? I know that it's okay for me to have, even if it's not a meal, like I'm not talking like a full blown meal, yeah. it's okay to have a snack. Like if you have your apple or granola bar, things like that, just to get your mind knowing, you know what? It's okay. It's yeah. okay to honor my hunger. You, you realize, you know what? I am actually hungry. And you know, there, people, um, I've read somewhere that like, people should always like drink water to you know, distract yourself or chew gum and things like that. No. And it's just like, no, just eat. You know, <laughs> because you, like, I used to do that too. I would drink my water and then my stomach would be growling even more <laughs> from the water. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? Because <laughs> I wasn't eating. So <laughs> listen to your body. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I'm not making fun of everyone because I've been there. Like I'm laughing yeah. at myself. Oh yeah. I know. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Um, but honestly, that's one of the most important ones is just honoring your hunger. So I, I think like ditching that diet culture, diet mentality and honoring your hunger, those are so important. So I, I really encourage people to really like focus on that. <laughs> Start there. Okay. I have yeah. an important, I have a question for you about mm-hmm. this. So when I had my eating disorder and was transitioning back into and starting to learn some of the um, basics around intuitive eating, mm-hmm. I was so out of touch with my hunger and fullness levels mm-hmm. because of the damage I'd done to my body, the amount of time I'd spent not listening to it. I mean, the lack of trust in my ability to trust my body was just so far gone at that point. So Mm -hmm. if there's somebody who's listening right now, who's like, I truly don't think I feel hungry or Mm -hmm. would know what that even is. Like any, any tips or advice for those people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say is that definitely um, intuitive eating can work with anyone. It's either even if you want to lose weight or you you had a past eating disorder, um, but it is hard. Like it's, again, it's just always going to be a hard concept because we lost that inability. So my recommendation is really just to focus on whenever you feel like you're not hungry, right? Most of the time you think about when was the last time I ate? Mm-hmm. And you, and I always recommend, even sometimes you were not hungry, right? Yeah. But because we're stressed out, like a lot of times, you know, I notice that too, like even for myself, like with everything that's happening in the world right now, like yeah. I'm stressed out and we do, maybe we're not hungry or we forget to eat, yeah. but really think, you know what? My body needs energy. Um, you know, I, I'm starting to feel tired. I'm starting to feel irritable, cranky. And you really have to listen to your body. Like, why do I feel this way? Mm. Probably need some food and some water too, but <laughs> definitely some food, right? <laughs> um, Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I really, I really uh, just recommend people to think about it like that. Don't think about, okay, I need a meal or it's, it's noon and I'm still not hungry. Think what's happening to my body right now. How can I nourish it? How can I fuel it? Um, yeah. Am I tired? Uh, yeah. Things like that. Just yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I think this is so important because mm-hmm. the number of women that I hear from who are like, I just don't get hungry until 3 PM. And I have days where I feel the same way, where things are going so fast. You grab that coffee and then you hit 3 p.m. though, and you are like Mm -hmm. hangry. You are needing a nap. (laughs) You want to eat all the things. Like our bodies aren't meant to function without an energy source. It's not how they are built in a way to really optimally function. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important to note that within intuitive eating, it is about honoring hunger and fullness, but we don't only eat when we're hungry and always stop when we're full. There are (laughs) moments when you're just going to have to like, okay, I'm, I'm not hungry yet, but I have a three hour zoom meeting. So I'm going to need to fuel before that meeting or Mm -hmm. I'm not hungry some days until 1 PM, but I know my body needs energy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it some food anyways. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. It's an important piece of it that can be a bit confusing for people in the beginning. And especially when you're starting, I know, um, Ali Eberhardt, who's another fantastic registered dietitian as well, always Mm -hmm. says sort of eating within an hour of waking up, even Mm -hmm. if you're not starving 
And then every, you know, three to four hours at a minimum, fueling your body in some capacity, especially if you're recovering from an eating disorder or, you know, really disordered eating. Is that sort of aligned with what you teach or are you like hardcore only eat when you're hungry? No, 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 no. Because that, and I, um, and I love that concept because I always tell my clients, um, a lot of them will just have coffee in the morning and that's it. And I'm like, no, I <laughs> I'm like, do me a favor. No, you're your coffee, no, like, no. That's not a meal. I say that. I feel like I say that line so many times. <laughs> like coffee is not a meal. <laughs> it's not a meal. It makes us feel full, but it's not a meal. Um, and yes. I tell them, I'm like, I know that you're not hungry. I, I can guarantee. Um, because before they even tell me, I'm like, I bet you, you're going to tell me next that you're not hungry. Um, yes. which is what they do tell me. And I'm like, I, I want you to not force it. I don't even like using that word because it sounds bad, but I want you to have something. It can be light. It can be a little container of yogurt. It can be a slice of toast with something on it. I don't care what it is, but you need food. Like you need energy, you need fuel. Um, so the coffee, you know, it's a liquid. So that's why it feels full. Um, that's why, you know, you feel full. Cause I'm the same, like, honestly, these are things that I have to tell myself, yeah. <laughs> like I'm the same way. Yeah. So I would never recommend something to someone that I haven't done or that I wouldn't do, you know, because I'm, I'm very much that type of, okay, I have my coffee. I'm ready to start my day, you know, and sometimes yeah. I'm not hungry, but I, I not force it, but I will make sure to have something with it. Mm-hmm. It can be light. It does not have to be like a huge meal, just something to give your body energy. Yeah. So I, I, so yes, to answer your question. Yes. I agree with all of that. Yes. I feel yes. like I always go off on tangents. Yes. No, I love, I love that. And I think that it's always so important. I, I just love hearing when people who are preaching are also practicing yeah. and don't necessarily find it easy. Like, I think sometimes we assume that the, the personal trainer just like always feels motivated to work out or that the registered dietitian just has like all their food stuff completely sorted out 100% of the time. When Mm -hmm. the reality is, is that most of the people who are teaching at one point really had to practice it themselves and still do Mm -hmm. to some extent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Always finding new ways. (laughs) Always, always finding new tricks and tools and all the things. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know uh, when we're on this conversation about breakfast, because intermittent fasting is such a thing right now. (laughs) Everybody is intermittent fasting and there are like, I'm like, does Instagram really know what I do? Why are they showing me these before and after? Um, I'm getting them too. (laughs) I'm not for this Instagram, but so can you explain your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Okay. So I'm, I'm not a fan clearly. Um, (laughs) but I, and I, and I don't want to put anyone down who's doing it. Um, because I can't even speak from like a scientific, we're still getting new evidence about it, all of that stuff. Yes. Um, but I will speak just because it's, again, I feel like your body needs something. Um, Whenever, you know, going for that long period of time, you know, when you, what is it, like the 12 to eight timeline, um, I just feel like that's too long. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time you need something, especially if you're running around, like most of us have meetings, we have, even if you're chasing your kids, like it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're still a human, you're still moving around, like you need food. Um, so I just, I'm not a fan, um, because I just feel like your body needs more than that. I feel like it's very kind of a robotic way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also, I feel like fasting though is okay, you know, for religious reasons. Like, I just want to say that yeah, um, because I know different religions do that, but to use it as a lifestyle, a, a lifestyle, um, I don't think is the best idea. I think we need, we need fuel. Um, and I wish, I wish people again, would just think of food as fuel and not this, this force fed concept. (laughs) That's what intermittent fasting feels like to me. So (laughs) it's so challenging when the new diets come out with such compelling before and after photos and such compelling quote unquote research behind them. And Mm -hmm. There are always celebrities and always health and wellness gurus who are endorsing them. And so mm-hmm. even I am like, you know, the reason Instagram's 
sent me it is because at one point I clearly clicked on it to read what the heck was going on. <laughs> so it's, it's set up to really grab our attention and to offer us solutions to our mm -hmm. problems, our bodies, our stretch marks, our insecurities. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, can you talk to me a little bit about diet culture as a whole and why it's so pervasive in society today? Well, it just stems from society giving us um, a visual of what they think, or not they, but what um, people should look like. And it just stems from this thin ideal mm -hmm. um, that is not achievable. Like we, we all are not gonna look the same. Yeah. Um, and just forcing our body to try to look the same is, it's sad, it's just unrealistic, and it just makes people, you know, it, it's confusing because a lot of times people will look at their friend or a celebrity, which honestly, celebrities are sometimes even like the worst inspirations because I'm just like, you know, JLo looks great, but yeah. she's also very rich. So yes, she <laughs> looks like that. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, like we, we have these ideals and it's just, it's just not realistic. Mm. And quite frankly, we've kind of lost sight of that. Like something like you uh, brought up like cellulite and stretch marks, those are normal. Yeah. Um, those are coming, you know, not even just with age, like a lot of kids sometimes get them, yeah. you know, it's just part of what our bodies should be looking like. And we're shown images that are often photoshopped and things like that. So it's all wrapped up in this diet culture of us being shown images of what they think we should look like. Mm -hmm. And it's just not realistic. So, and that goes and for men too, it can go for anyone. And all those images are being shown to us so that we then buy products. Exactly. <laughs> and buy diet mm -hmm. pills and protein powders. And I mean, I use protein mm -hmm. powders, but like there's yeah. a it's a billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollar industry. It's 72 billion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. What? 72 billion dollars? 72 billion. Yeah, you can Google it. It's, it's really, it's so, and it's growing. I think that's actually an outdated number because I, I think that it's growing. Wow. Um, I think it increased actually, but 72 billion from wow. the last time I checked. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, and it's not just diet industry. It, I imagine that 72 billion, it's all of the pieces that surround that. Like there are parts of fashion, there are parts of media. It, mm -hmm. It's all of that included? Or is that like strictly the diet? It's like weight loss pills, uh, books. You know, we, we, there's like a new book coming out all the yeah. time. And oftentimes they're not from people that are unfortunately like health professionals. It's just yes. like, you know, I, I, I admire, um, I love Bethany Frankel. I do. I loved her on, you know, Real Housewives, but like, she's not a health professional and right. to look at, right. look at her book, you know, she has like yeah. all these like books and stuff. So yeah. things like that, it's, it's all encompassed. So yeah, yeah it's, oh, it's a large wow. industry. <laughs> wow. It's a large industry. So, do you think that there are any benefits to this industry? Because I feel like they sell, that there are a lot of benefits that you'll be yeah. healthier, happier, you'll find love. Like, I mean, that, is that true to some, and I'm just, I mean, I'm, this is all conversational, really. I'm not, not yeah, expecting yeah. you to have the perfect answer or anything, but mm -hmm. is there some good that can come from diet? I don't think so. It, it's just this, um, because when you think about it, and when I think about how I used to be, so I'm putting, I'm going back, um, when I was doing the calorie counting and I got to my like lowest weight that I've ever, ever had. Mm -hmm. And I still wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, I had this goal weight that I reached it. I actually surpassed it, um, which was a little scary. And I was, I thought I'd be happy, but I wasn't. And, you know, a lot of times we think that this body will, um, or whatever body where um, our goal is, we think that's going to make us happy. We think that that will end all of our problems, but it, it doesn't mm -hmm. because many times there's something else going on that we're unhappy about. And, you know, getting to a goal weight isn't going to cure that. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, and honestly, you know, we talk about, well, when I lose the weight, I'll, I'll, you know, finally find love or something, but shouldn't you find a partner that accepts you, you know, mm -hmm. like, 
so yeah. um, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of things. So to answer your question, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um. <laughs> I always say, you know, the only good in my mind that can come out of past diets as people decide to move forward mm -hmm. is that sometimes you can look back and examine like what worked for me in that what what made me feel a bit better and what made me feel awful so for example of all the kabillion trillion diets and cleanses and things that i did something like wild rose was the worst version of erin you could possibly imagine i was starving i was cold i was grumpy i couldn't focus where some people are like I blossomed. I was like loving life with that. Right. It was awful for me, digestive issues. And then like, I would double the weight on the way back after right. you know, stopping. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, carbohydrates, if I cut those out, like it's not a good scene. I need, and this is going to piss people off, but like I need carbs at every meal and for snacks. And that is just, Again, I feel cold, hungry, grumpy, tired. It's just something that works with my individual body. Whereas yeah. some people might try more of a low carb thing and feel like, oh, actually I do have more energy. So maybe moving forward, I don't need as many carbs as I was having before, mm -hmm. but I don't have to be so rigid. What are your thoughts on that? So to make everyone happy, I will say that our bodies are different, you know? Yeah. Um, so people on the low carb train, um, as you know, I just want uh, everyone like not to cut out carbs as a whole. So yes. even if let's say you're like <laughs> doing the low carb thing, okay, like it's working for you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on that, but um, cause our bodies are all different, you know, and I, and I post about that a lot too, yes, just because um, I, I feel like we're constantly being thrown different things. And now there's like something called a carnivore diet, which I'm so, my mind is like blown away by. Um, but what works for that, <laughs> a little scary, <laughs> but you know, what works for someone, you know, isn't going to work for someone else. And, you know, you need carbs. I'm the same way. Like, I feel like I need carbs too, but yeah. someone who's doing a low carb diet and they find that you know what that is working for me and they feel happy they're yeah. not super restrictive yeah. that works for them and you know what that's okay yeah that's okay but just know that just because someone else is doing the low carb thing it's not going to work for you yeah. um, our bodies also digest things differently process things differently um so it's okay it's okay as yeah. long as you're not taking out full um food groups that's that's kind of the thing that i like to avoid is taking out full. completely agree right. completely agree yeah 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 i mean i'm absolutely on the same page in that 98 percent of diets i think the recent research studies are saying fail mm -hmm. within two years diets don't work as a long-term exactly. solution so all i'm saying is that some like you could uh look back and sort of almost imagine it like a science experiment, what worked, what didn't work for your body, but like, it's not a long-term <laughs> no. sustainable solution. So that's where for me, intuitive eating has been so pivotal in landing in a place where I'm not constantly thinking about food, where my weight has been sustainable, um, where it, it's, I mean, it's really just given me so much freedom mm -hmm. from the battle with food and my body. It's been an absolutely incredible, incredible journey. So I'm so excited whenever I'm seeing more people who are teaching it, yeah. more people who are talking about it and who have, you know, experienced similar changes themselves. Mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> Can you bust a couple of myths? So you share these bites, you put up your little board on Instagram <laughs> with these quotes and they're always fire. I love them. There were two that I pulled out that I would love it if you could expand on. Yes, definitely. So the first one is fat burning foods sound too good to be true because they don't exist. Yes. People are like, what? Why have I been eating so much celery? Oh, <laughs> negative calories. Like that's the term that I always hear. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's, they're just not true. Like anything that sounds too good to be true. Yeah. It just isn't like, you know, let's be real. And, and going back to, um, what you were saying before about like diets, not working and, you know, fat burning foods and all that, you know, um, if diets worked and if all the, if we had magical foods, we would all be 
like fine we would all like let's face it oprah's been on a diet her whole life yes um or different ones and have they worked no she's doing great though she looks great yeah but you know these things don't work and the thing and i pulled that fat burning (laughs) <laughs> um, just because uh, I get my thoughts from clients, honestly, who ask me questions. So yes. I remember a client asking me that one day and she's talked about celery. She yes. also talked about um, green tea and all of these things. So yes. is cel- like, I'm not a fan of celery, but is celery, you know, does it have its health benefits? Yes, of course. But is it fat burning? Does green tea burn your fat? No. Green <laughs> tea can raise your metabolism by a little bit. Yeah. but it's not fat burning. So there is no food out there to just burn your fat. Um, it, you know, it, I don't even know honestly where that concept stemmed from, but I, I do hear it a lot. Um, and I, I just, marketing. To, I know marketing, exactly. Buzzword. Media. Um, media. Yeah. You know, it, it just doesn't, I'm, I'm just picturing like a group of people in a room just being like, okay, what can we say now? <laughs> you know, what can we like say about foods? Um, there, I like to just say that there are, of course, healthy foods, you know, there are things that we can do, you know, and no food is good or bad, but there are, yes, foods that will do certain things for us, but burning your fat, you know, slimming you down, like having this whole negative calorie, that's not, that's not real. Um, yeah. It just, it sounds too good to be true because it is. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the next one is, this is your reminder that superfoods don't have oh, super super powers, <laughs> just clever marketing. That's another one where I'm just picturing people sitting in a room like, yeah. <laughs> with their notes. <laughs> Let's call it like quinoa, kale, like chickpeas, beans. Blueberries, salmon. Like yeah. those are all really good, delicious foods. And I highly recommend if you can to add them to your meals. Yes. But those aren't superfoods. So superfood, I feel like just stemmed from, um, we just have like our food of the moment, you know, cauliflower is having its moment. Yes. (laughs) It's moment now. Kale had its moment. Um, trying to think of something else, but you know, quinoa, blueberries, like people think these are just magical foods. They're not, you know, they're healthy. Yes. They give us really great benefits, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, but they're not super, you know, it, it really was just a team of people. I don't know which team I would love to know which team decided <laughs> that that was a super food. Um, because a lot of times we think of kale as powerful, but spinach is just as healthy. Right. You know, I, I always get that from people. People are like, I hate kale. I'm like, don't yes. eat it. I, I mean, kale is so disruptive to my stomach. And I was like blending it into smoothies and yeah. all this And then I had this moment where I was like, my body actually hates kale. It, it's rough. And it's rough. <laughs> it's not easy for a lot of stomachs to digest if you have no, a more spinach. But spinach is great. Like most people, many people. And if you don't like spinach, there's another, there's a whole bunch of other leafy greens that you can try. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, if you don't like leafy greens, have some broccoli. Like, you know, there's just a lot of different options. So what do you think, like, I'm trying to think now that we're having this conversation, who decides what the superfood of the year is? It's like the Pantone color. It's like, I would love a- to know. I, because everyone gets yeah. on board with it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all the cookbooks, all the smoothies, all the like media, mm-hmm. is there one media outlet? Is there like a farming association? That's what I, I would honestly love to know. I don't know where it's stemmed from. Um, I'm thinking maybe, you know how like when a, when a celebrity or someone in the limelight does something yeah. that kind of sets off the trend, like either mm-hmm clothes or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, and they probably have their personal chefs or whatever is going on. So I don't know if it's like, well, you see, you know, Jennifer Aniston or like Oprah, like eating this. So that has to be like good and super. Right. So then like the public wants to do that too. So I don't know if that's where it stems from, but that's kind of my thinking, you know, I'll never forget. I always see this picture of Beyonce with the kale sweatshirt. Um, so I'm just like, okay, it has to be like a dose of like, <laughs> Something like that. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it's interesting though, when you start to actually consciously think and, and consider all the messages that we receive and like, where are they coming from? And what is the driving force behind that? Exactly. And, mm-hmm. you know, is this a paid advertisement? Is somebody benefiting from me signing up for this? Um, mm-hmm. 
and you know, the more conscious we can become about these things, the more questions we can ask. And it's an amazing time to be alive with um, social media because we can actually use our voice to agree. Mm -hmm. speak up and create change. As challenging as social media can be, there are some massive benefits as well. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, another common thing I hear from clients is, okay, I want to try intuitive eating and I'm not an intuitive eating dietitian. I like reflect on some of the principles in my own way of teaching as a health mm -hmm. coach. Um, but by no means am I trained in it or like a registered dietitian in it. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to know from your perspective, a lot of people say, okay, that sounds really good. And that sounds like everything that I want to do, but I'm just going to go over here and lose the weight first. And then I'll start doing all this like self-love work. And then I'll start doing the intuitive eating afterwards. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. And I actually get that a lot where people <laughs> think that they want to lose the weight first. Yeah. Um, and I, so yeah. So what I always say to them is when we're, when you're losing the weight, most often, again, it's probably going off of one of these restrictive diets. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I very much doubt that people are going to say, well, I'm just going to, um, you know, do this in like a healthy way. You know, most of the time you're like, okay, I'm going to cut my calories. I'm going to cut out carbs, you know, whatever. So once, once you lose the weight, suppose you do lose the weight and now you're like, okay, I'm ready to do intuitive eating. You've already lost your, your, um, in tuneness with your body, yes. right? Because you've already said you've already cut your calories severely you've already so that kind of sort of messes up the metabolism also your way of thinking yeah um you know cutting out food groups like you cut out all your carbs so again that might have been something your body needs because most of us you know again not knocking the low carb people but our bodies need carbs like our yeah. brain uses like 70 percent of our yeah. carbs so you yeah. need it um so you're so i always i don't recommend doing that um for people just because I, I think it's so important to start getting in tune with your body, to start learning how to trust your body, because again, it's a process. Yes. It's not going to be easy, but you, it's baby steps about learning to trust yourself. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. I got this, just got this visual of like, you know, a client standing in front of you and you say, we're going to do intuitive eating. They're like, okay, I'm just going to run here to the opposite end of the football field. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to run over there. And then I'll make my way back and we'll do all the work to get back to you. And then we'll start going down the other end of the field. It's like, why are you running in the other direction? Exactly. <laughs> where we are. Yes. And move forward from there rather than having to do all this work and then all the work to get you back to like square one. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's such a, I, I get it. I understand why people do it. And I understand oh, totally. how scary and foreign and like, Ugh, just challenging intuitive eating seems that it will be, but it is mm -hmm. a game changer. It yeah. is life changing. Agreed. Mm -hmm. If you could pass on one message to women mm -hmm. of the world, say your clients, and they were all going to open an email up tomorrow morning with one message from you, your last message to them. Yeah. What would you tell them? I would say that your body is unique. Your body is special. Again, it's so important to remember that we're all not going to look alike. We all have a certain set weight. We all have, I mean, let's face it, we all have different skin. We all have different hair. We're not going to all look alike. Um, so let's stop trying to look like one another because that's, that's where a lot of this, the diet culture comes from. It's you have this image in your head and you're like, I want to achieve that. And you're fighting your body essentially. You know, you're fighting your body and that's, that's a whole nother, you know, haze, the healthy at every size is like a whole nother conversation. But, um, you know, everyone has this set weight that you can be healthy, you can thrive at. And you know what, that might look different. You might look larger or you might look smaller than somebody else. And that's okay. You can mm -hmm. still be healthy. You can still thrive and do the things that you need to do but you should concentrate on your health. So I, I just want women to start concentrating on their health. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's, that's the most important thing, not the size, but your health. 
Beautiful. So that, yeah. I, love <laughs> I love that. I would normally wrap it up, but of course, one more question has now. Okay. Up. <laughs> yeah. Get that. Um, so I know one of the principles of intuitive eating is to really make peace with your body and mm-hmm. to um, soften your expectations around it. One of which being my body needs to lose weight. My body needs to be a different size. Yeah. But of course, when anyone starts working with a dietitian or a health coach, oftentimes they're driven because they're at an uncomfortable place. They're like, I'm not happy in my body right now. I'm not happy with my relationship with food. Do you find with people who are um, working on intuitive eating, and obviously it's a process and it takes some time, that they tend to land at more of what was called when I was in the hospital for my eating disorder, they said, you'll land at a happy weight. A happy weight is where your body just sort of stays within five to 10 pounds maybe, and Mm -hmm. feels very easy to maintain that. Do you find that intuitive eating helps move you towards that like quote unquote happy weight um, eventually? Definitely, definitely. And it's, I I keep saying this because it's it's true, like it's not easy. Um, because you do have to start with that mindset, but just knowing that we all have a happy weight, um, that, you know, set point where our bodies just want to be at, you know, and I, anything, you know, trying to constantly fight your body is just not a way to live. And, you know, it, um, not to discourage anyone or not to put anyone down who's still not there yet with, you know, they're still on their Atkins or whatever is out there. Um, but you know, just know that you shouldn't spend your whole life fighting your body. There are so many things that you could be doing. Um, and we all do have, as you put it, I like that. I think I'm going to use that now a happy weight. Um, because that's what your body is thriving at. That's what it's happy at. Um, so you shouldn't fight that. It's, it's hard to accept. And, and one of the goals I actually give, I don't, um, this is a big one. I always tell my clients to diversify their social media mm-hmm. because we start to realize we're following the same look. Um, and I realized that myself, I was like, why is everyone like thin? Like I'm following, I follow like a bunch of dietitians and yes. you know, not every dietitian looks the same, but you know, there's that look and you're, and yeah. you, after a while I was like, why am I, why, <laughs> why is this happening? Yes. So I, I tell people to diversify their feed, diversify your body diversify when I say body, like the feed that you're seeing, diversify everything. Doesn't just mean like, you know, the race or skin color. It means like diversify. Um, That really does help people. It really does because you see that there are people that are thriving and are happy. Um, So it's, yeah, that's one of the goals I give people. It's so important. (laughs) <laughs> love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. It has been so fun chatting with you. You are yeah. a wealth of knowledge. I feel like I could sit here and talk to you for hours, <laughs> but we will let you go. Where can people connect with you if they're interested in working with you, following along on social media, um, just reading? You're, you have so many resources available for people. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I'm most active um, on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> on Instagram. So it's the Nutrition Tea. Um, I also have my website, which is called the nutritiontea.com. So there, there are links um, for, you know, bookings or sessions. You can also email me. It's the nutritiontea at Gmail. So there's a theme here. Um, Twitter, <laughs> the same it. thing. I know it's like Friends the nutrition tea. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's the nutrition tea. Um, I'm on pretty much everything except TikTok. I just feel too old for that. So <laughs> oh God, on everything fine. except TikTok. Hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. But that's where you can find me. So. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, for everyone who's tuned in right now, if you enjoyed this episode, if you found that there was any insights or tools that you'll be using, please take a moment to screenshot the episode, share it tagging at the nutrition tea and at raw beauty talks. Almost forgot my Instagram handle for a second. <laughs> we would love to hear from you. And you can also always click the link, copy it, and send it on over to your friends to spread Shanna's amazing message. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>